for this podcast, we're going to head out to the eastern parts of US 192, over to where it meets the Florida Turnpike. This is the place where we used to always come up from South Florida. We'd come on the Florida Turnpike, come up US 192, and head over to the Walt Disney World Resort and go up World Center Drive. We're going to make a quick pit stop here, though, to talk about something interesting about 192. So you may have noticed that 192 looks a lot different than it used to. Uh, 192, of course, is Erlo Bronson Drive, named after the state senator, and uh, he owned a lot of this land down here. Now, 192, we'll show some shots of 192 here, and you can see how it's different if you look at it from what it was in the early 1970s to what it looks like today. It's a very different sort of road. Now, interestingly, there was one particular location here, and it was called the Bamboo Lounge, and I've stopped here. It would have been kind of right behind me. And it was a popular hangout for uh, Disney cast members after work. Now, I can't say that I ever went there, but I know a lot of people who did. So I figured this was kind of the right location to come to and kind of talk about the history of how this road has changed so much over the years. It's just very interesting how it's evolved. And yet it looks kind of the same to a large degree. Now, there's another little interesting thing here. A couple of blocks from here, maybe a couple of miles uh, from here, is uh, the uh, Kissimmee uh, Main Street. And on Main Street is the uh, train station, and that was the train station that served this area. So if you wanted to get to Kissimmee and to uh, what became Earl Bronson Drive and this main road, the way you had to come was to actually come up and come into the uh, Kissimmee train station. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like and maybe what it looked like historically too. So let's leave again, go back east along 192, and head over to the train station that I mentioned. On the left is how it looked in the early 1970s, and on the right is how it looks today. It looks very similar to the way it looked at that time. And here's a picture of someone getting off of the train and heading into town. While it's used today for SunRail, the train service is still not so great here. There's not a lot of trains running through the area. We head out into the parking lot and we can see how things have evolved a little bit and how they look. So it's interesting. It's really different out here. Everything has kind of changed. Uh, there was a lot of different things that have come up over the years. The road looks different. Uh, everything's kind of different. It's, it's evolving again here in the uh, 2018 or so. Um, things are very different and you're starting to see some revitalization. A lot of the old hotels and a lot of the old shops and buildings are now changing. And some of the things that were in the middle there in the, like the 1990s, you know, somewhere 20 years before when Disney, 20 years after when Disney was built and 20 years ago from now, Things have changed a little bit, uh, you know, so there was a lot of evolutionary stuff that happened. You know, there were miniature golf courses and other things that popped up and a lot of other types of shops that weren't the uh, sort of honky-tonk, knick-knacky shops uh, are now going and were replaced with other things. And so now you're seeing a little bit higher end things that are coming in. And it's like the guy said in the video. As we get closer to Disney's opening in October, the pace will pick up. Then the thousands or the millions of people, they're talking about a million people a month coming into the area. And you've never had a million people in this area in a year, much less a month. So you imagine what's going to happen. This is, this is going to be Boom Boom Town USA is what it amounts to. Yes, it's Boom Boom Town USA. And that's what's happened here. Everything has changed and evolved. And it's very different than it was, uh, you know, 20 years ago and especially 40 years ago or 25 and 50, somewhere in that range where things are very different than they used to be. And you're seeing some very big differences in the way the community looks and everything, everything feels these days. So it's very different, interesting in the evolutionary cycle. And this was like one of those places. It's only a few miles from Disney and one of those places where a lot of people came to hang out. Now I know when I was growing up and we'd come up here, we'd stay along uh, Erlo Bronson Drive here, uh, 192, at various hotels. There was a couple of them that we were that were famous with us. I think one of the ones we stayed at a lot was the Knights Inn, which is up the road a little bit. I'll show you a shot of that in a moment. And uh, we stayed there a lot because the price was right, and it was very close to Disney. It's very close to the main gate entrance, so we stayed there a lot after the prices started to go up at some of the Disney hotels. That was our go-to place, and so we'd stay there. So interesting, and things have evolved, and it's really kind of neat, and this is where this is where it all kind of comes together you know we're back on the property that's just outside of what disney built but yet something that was right around where disney was walking through you can imagine him kind of walking through here and looking at things so we'll head out along 192 on the left again is a early 1970s video 
And on the right is what it looks like today. You can kind of see how it's grown completely. It used to be all orange groves and cattle ranches. And today, it's grown into something much greater than that. Here's the hotel I mentioned, the Knights Inn Hotel, as it appeared back in the day. And as we go along, we see all of the signs for hotels, motels, and no-tells. Places that people might come and stay if they wanted to go to the burgeoning Walt Disney World Resort. But it wasn't only hotels and motels along the way. There were a lot of interesting facilities and roadside attractions. Ticket sales were ubiquitous. You'd find them everywhere. And the roadside attractions were something to behold. Here we see some examples of them. Here's Merlin sitting in front of a uh, gift shop. It was a way to draw people in. You had a giant alligator eating a car. I think it was the second largest alligator ever constructed. You had discount gift shops on every corner. Here was the 99 cent shops for t-shirts. Some hotels had their own little catchy things like this one that was the Rocket Hotel. The shell shops, there were many of them along the road. Here's one that had a giant mermaid out front. And of course, there was Orange World. Orange World sold fresh, squeezed orange juice. And it's where the orange bird came from, essentially, because it was part of the orange conglomerate. That we and one of the most memorable things to me was the cypress clocks made of cypress trees. I remember seeing them every single time we'd come along US 192. And one other thing, a little nod to Erlo Bronson, is it's this building, which is Bronson's partnership, whose manager is Erlo Bud Bronson, the man we saw before. There's my look at US 192 or Erlo Bronson Memorial Highway.